Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is such a privilege to be worshiping the Lord with all of you. Before we begin, let us turn our Bibles to Psalms chapter 61 and read verses 2 to 5. It says, From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. When we feel like our heart is faint, the only assurance that we have, the only thing that we can do is just ask God and say, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We cannot do anything with our own strength. We cannot do anything with our own might. But one thing we can do is just go to the presence of God and ask him, Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amidst all this uncertainty, amidst all this confusion, Lord, when my heart is faint, I will come to you and when I come to your presence I know that my strength will be renewed and right now before we begin this time of worship let us all close our eyes and pray our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this time to come at your feet and spend time with you, Lord. Thank you for giving us the privilege to worship you, Lord, through it all, through any uncertainty that might be in our lives, Lord. Thank you for showing us that we can always come to your presence and just say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, Lord. Right now, we are praying and we pray that you will lead us to the rock that is higher than we are, Lord. By our strengths, we can never do anything. But with you, we are more than conquerors, Lord. This time of worship, I pray that you will lead us, you will guide us, and that you will speak to us, and that your presence will fill our hearts in a very special way, Lord. I pray that not none of the glory will go to us, but all of the glory would go to you and you alone, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. He has been with us throughout this year and even in this new month of August, I believe that God is going to do amazing things for you and I because the Bible says that He works the good for all who love Him. Before we start this praise and worship, let's all just turn our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. It's a very familiar verse that you would have heard many times, but today I just want to remind you of this verse. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Whenever I read this verse, I would wonder how do the righteous, how can we run to the name of the Lord? It seems very weird because the name of the Lord is not exactly a place. And many of many a times we think, Lord, I want that refuge, but how do I attain it? God, you know, He just wants us to come to Him like how you would approach your Father. And I think that is amazing because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords says, just run to me. Today, wherever you are, just open up your hearts and start running to God because He is our refuge. And when He is our refuge, we know that in Him, we have all comfort. In Him, we have all healing. And that when we praise our God, that there is power in our praises. So right now, let's all clap our hands. Open our hearts, stir our spirits to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord most high. Would you sing along with us? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous The 
name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are that there is no other name below the heavens and on the earth that mankind should be saved but the name of Jesus. Today we believe that we are saved not because of our righteous acts. We are saved not because of how good we are. We are saved by the name of Jesus and we are saved by the redemption work he has done for us. Even as we continue to praise with the next song, standing on the promises i want each one of you to examine yourself and ask are we standing on the promises of god or are we standing on our own strength it's a question we should always ask ourselves because when we stand on the promises of god we know that we are unshaken and that the devil has no dominion over us so even as we sing this song let us believe that we are standing upon the rock of ages and when we stand upon him that we cannot be shaken Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Let's sing that again Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Let's declare it together Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love's strong core Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God again. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love's strong core Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Let's declare that again Standing, standing Standing on the promises 
promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing. I am standing on the promises of God. Amen. It is a joy to know that we are standing on the promises of God. Even right now, let's all close our eyes and enter this time of worship. Father God, we thank you, O Lord, because we are standing upon your promises. Lord, your word never changes, O Lord, and what you have declared to us will come pass because you are not a man who lies, O Lord. You are not mankind that you should change your mind, O Lord. You are the God, and you are the God that never changes, O Lord. Father, we thank you because we can trust in your word in a world where there is no such thing as trust, Lord. We know that we can trust in you oh lord jesus father we thank you oh lord because your word is the truth and we know that when we stand upon the truth that no lie of this world no lie of the devil oh lord can ever deceive us father we thank you oh lord and we worship you tonight lord we just give you all the glory lord we glorify your name Oh, 
present ourselves as living sacrifices, O oh Lord. Father God, use us for your glory, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that even in this time that we decrease and you increase, O oh Lord God. Father God, I pray that you teach us to live for you, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, and I pray that every word of our mouth, every action that we do and everything that we do reflects your glory, O oh Lord. Oh Lord, let our light shine before men so that they might see our good deeds and glorify you, O oh Lord. Father God, I pray that even right now that you mend us, you mold us into your liking, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, and I pray that we will learn to live a life that glorifies oh you, O oh Lord. Father God, I just pray right now that we draw nearer to you, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that we don't stray away from you when things get tough. Lord, I pray that even in the darkest of nights, even in the pain, that we will draw nearer to you, O Lord, because you are our refuge. And in your refuge place, Lord, we know that we will get every kind of comfort, every kind of healing, and every kind of solace, O Lord Jesus. Lord, even as we sing this song, I pray that you draw our hearts closer to you. Draw us nearer to you, O Lord. 
Lord, I pray that every day as we live, that we will take a step closer to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that even though we might be in the wilderness, and though like a wanderer we might be, that we will know that our home is not on this earth, O Lord. Let us always remember that our eternal home is where you belong, O Lord God. And I pray that every day that we will draw nearer so that we can live with you one day, O Lord Jesus. For the life we live now, we live only to see and to live with you, O Lord Jesus. We know that whatever we go through now, whatever situation we might be in right now, O Lord God, even as the world is, is a, an unfamiliar territory, Lord Jesus, Lord, we know that this is not our home and that you have created a home for us, O Lord God. Father, Lord, we thank you for giving us this assurance, O Lord God. Even as we prepare our hearts to listen to your word, I pray that you prepare our hearts, O Lord Jesus, and I pray that your word will bear fruit in its due season. Lord, we give you all the praise we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor all this we ask in Jesus name amen hallelujah, hallelujah. the presence of God is so sweet amen and it feels like we can just keep worshiping him all day it's such a joy to be in the presence of God right now let's all open up our Bibles prepare our hearts and get ready to hear the voice of God amen Greetings to all of you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it's been a new month. We have walked through seven days of the month of August. And I believe God has been so faithful and he was so good to all of you. And just like I always say, God is good all the time. And uh, God is good all the time. God is good. I want everybody to say that together with me, right from wherever you are. Can we all say that together? God is good and he is good all the time and all the time God is good. You know, we serve a God who is faithful. We serve a God who is true. And just like we sang the song, that was a wonderful time of worship. God is so true to all his promises. And God's promises are yea and amen. And I believe all the promises that God has given each and every one of you, he is going to be true and he is going to be faithful and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen, amen, amen. And let's, let's just give a clap offering to the heavenly father. God has been so good. Let's just clap and thank God for all his goodness, for all his mercies for all throughout this year. Amen. I just want everybody to close your eyes, bow down your heads and look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time of worship. I thank you, God, because you are there for us all the time and you are there for us, you know, holding on, Lord, even as we hold on to the promises that you have given us. We wait and in patience, Father, because your promises will be fulfilled in our lives. I thank you, Jesus. Lord, I, at this time, I commit myself into your precious hands, Father. Even as, you, as I bring forth your word, Lord, I pray that let it reach out to the people who hear your word, Father, who are waiting to hear the word of God, who are waiting to hear from you, Lord, so that they can feel empowered. Lord, I pray that every word of yours will never go in vain and every hearer of this word be blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, Father. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. I welcome all of you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, even as I was praying and waiting on the Lord, God directed me to this a book. It's a very small book in the Bible. It has only three chapters. And my attention was drawn to the book of Habakkuk. And God really spoke 
to me through this book. It's a very small book, and the prophet Habakkuk here clearly talks, you know, displays his heart and his burden for the people who lived during his time. And I, I just want to read the first verse of this book, and it says like this, the burden which the prophet Habakkuk saw. Here we see that the heart of this prophet was burdened. He had this burden for the people of Judah, the people of uh, Israel whom they lived during the time of Habakkuk. And here we see that he was there standing in the presence of God. He was there crying unto God for the people of Habakkuk. And even as I move on to my second part of the sermon that I began last week, the beginning of this month, uh, yet I will pray. Last week we discussed about Jabez. Jabez prayed unto God for his blessings. And today we are going to look at Habakkuk, how he stood before the Lord, how he came and, you know, he pleaded with God for the revival of the nation. And here this prayer is a very good example of the intercessory prayer. You know, even as we come as the children of God, even as we go before and stand before God and pray and plead for the nations, when we look at the things happening around in this, you know, the whole world, you know, the global, uh, the global, uh, the turmoil that's happening right now, you know, we are called to stand in the gap for the nations. And Habakkuk gives a very good example. And we are just going to quickly run through these, all the three chapters in this book. And we see in the first chapter, Habakkuk prayed for Judah. You know, it's very evident that his prayer for Judah was unanswered for a long time. So he was feeling very frustrated. He was feeling very dejected because he was interceding for the people of Judah for a very long time. You know, we understand this. When we read the first five verses of chapter 1, we see that Habakkuk was waiting. He was waiting to hear from God, and he displays the prolonged waiting. And it shows the patience that Habakkuk's patience was tested even as he waited, and he pleaded for an answer from God. You know, it clearly shows that he was in distress, and he was like just like how David cried unto God. You know, you re if you read the book of Psalms, there are many, many instances where we see David crying unto God. You know, in Psalms 18, 6, he says, In my distress I called upon the Lord. I cried unto my God, and he heard my voice. You know, you read this in the book of Psalms. You know, in Psalms 22, verse 2, he says, I cry in the daytime. But God has not heard me. You, and in Psalms 22, verse 24, we read, When I cried unto God, he heard my voice. And uh, the psalmist says, he did not hide his face for me. So here we see Habakkuk had the same distress that David displayed in his life. You know, he came before the Lord crying. He came before the Lord day and night pleading for the people. And when we look at Habakkuk, uh, the, and even as Habakkuk was praying, you know, we read in the verse 5 that God replied, the first two chapters of the book of Habakkuk, we read that there was a conversation that was going on back and forth between God and the prophet Habakkuk. He never directly addressed to the people like the other prophets that we read, but here Habakkuk was directly, he was very direct in interceding with God. He was asking God. He was telling God about the state of the people. He was, you know, he was complaining in a way to God. If you read verses 6 to 11 of the first chapter, we see that Habakkuk described the people of Judah as people who were very bitter. He, they were fierce. They were hasty. They were terrible. There was turmoil everywhere. The people were dreadful in their behavior, and they were swift, and they were so violent. And, you know, Habakkuk described that the people living who lived during those days, they were merciless, and they were scoffers and scorners. 
and they were mockers and idolaters. And today, when we look at the world around us, where, where you and I stand today, you know, all these characters that we have back described during the days of those people who lived in those days is very much similar to today. And when we move on to chapter 2, here we read that, you know, when Habakkuk was standing in the gap for the people and when he was expecting the answer from God, God gave the answer to Habakkuk and he said he is going to deal with this people, with these people. And God, is, God said he is going to bring in the Chaldeans to, train, to teach the people a lesson. God was planning, you know, God had a plan in his mind for people who were gone astray, who went away from the Lord. And you know, even when God answered, Habakkuk was not satisfied with the answer. And if you read verse two, uh, verse one of chapter two, Habakkuk says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Here Hab uh, God answered Habakkuk in chapter 1, but Habakkuk was not satisfied with the answer. You know, God told Habakkuk that he was going to bring in the Chaldeans to deal with these people, but he, the Habakkuk was not satisfied. He was telling, Lord, these people, the Babylonians are even worse than the people of Judah. You know, they behave even you know worse than these people. And how would you use them to change the behavior and the character of these people. You know, Habakkuk was still unsatisfied with the answer that God gave him. And that is why he says in chapter 2, verse 1, he says, I will stand upon my watch. Here we see prophet Habakkuk, he makes a decision. He decides and he puts himself in the place where he would want to stand in the gap for the people. You know, he took the initiative to pray for the people and he wanted to see the nation change. He wanted to see the people change. He wanted to see the revival that is going to happen in the nation when God deals with the people, when God deals with the sins, when God deals with the iniquities of the people who lived in those days. And Habakkuk, you know, we see that the heart of Habakkuk yearned to hear from God. And let's move on to the chapter 3, you know, where we see the prayer, the prophet's prayer, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet. And verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says, it begins with the prayer of prophet Habakkuk. And that is what we are going to uh, meditate on today. When we read the whole chapter, we see that prophet Habakkuk prayed for different things at you know a different point of time. You know the first part holds about the praise that God, Habakkuk you know praise God for the things that happened in the past. You know if you read all the way from verse two all the way until verses seven, we see Habakkuk describing about how. God uh, dealt with the people in the past. You know, uh, Habakkuk began to praise God for the things that happened in the past. Habakkuk recollected, you know, how God worked in miraculous way in saving the people. Habakkuk, you know, talks about how God revived the work. You know, verse 2, can I, re I'll just read the verse 2. Oh Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. Oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make it known in wrath remember mercy here god asked for god to do a revival in the nation he was pleading for the mercy of god and he was thanking god for the way in which god led the people in the past he was he began to thank god and uh, habakkuk praised god for the past deliverance of israel how he brought out the, brought the people out, how he brought them out from the slavery and how he led them through. And you know, Habakkuk, the next thing Habakkuk did was he praised God for his power. He praised God for his power. You read that in chapter 3 verses 8 to 15. 
The second thing that Habakkuk praised God was he praised God for the display of God's power in the life of the people. You know, he, he, he was telling how God was there, how God was, you know, swept away when God descends. He remembered how when God descended upon the Mount Sinai, when he gave the law to the people, you know, the mountain shook, the nations trembled. And here he, he reminds the people that whenever God intervenes, there is a display of his power. Here Habakkuk tells that, when God descended upon the mountains, you know, the mountains quaked and, you know, the, he was swept away. The people were lifted up and the moon, if you read verses, you know, all the way from eight, 10 to 15, we read, the mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. The sun and the moon stood Still in their habitation at the light of your arrows they went at the shining of your glittering spear here Habakkuk reminds the people that in the midst of the darkness when the presence of God descends he shines his light through our lives and that is what Habakkuk told you know it happened in those days where the Babylonians came over to you know, take over the people of Judah. And today in the lives that we live, there are many things that happens around us. And there are many Babylonians, the attack from the Babylonians. There are pharaohs who comes in our way. And you know, all that we have to do is stand still, you know, be in the presence of God. And just like how Prophet Habakkuk did, we are to praise God for his goodness in our lives. And the next thing Prophet Habakkuk did was he praised God for his presence. He praised God for his past deliverance. He praised God for the power in which God displayed. And here Habakkuk began to praise God for his present condition. We read that, you know, from verses 15 all the way to verses 19, verses 16, 17, 18, and 19. We read that Prophet Habakkuk praised God for his present condition. He says, in verse 17, he says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Hallelujah. Here we see that prophet Habakkuk, he praised God for all the goodness in the past. He praised God for all the power that he displayed in the lives of the people. And here Habakkuk praised God for his present condition. He says, no matter what happens around me, no matter how the... The Babylonians are going to attack on us. No matter how things are going to be so uncertain, even if there is a famine that's happening around in Judah, but when the people, uh, when the Babylonians attacked, when the Chaldeans came in and took over the people of Judah for their iniquities, when God used the Pharaohs and the Babylonians, you know, uh, Habakkuk decided that no matter what happens, he was to stand firm in the in the Lord. He was to stand firm in the God of salvation because he was so assured that God will take them through. You know, all the things that was happening during that time of Habakkuk so many years ago is true even to us today. You know, when we look at the world around us, when things are so uncertain, when things are, you know, when people are deprived of their, you know, of their things that belongs to them, when people are deprived of food, when people are deprived of clothing, when people are deprived of their living, God assures and tells that he is in control of everything. God is a sovereign God. And that is what God reminded Prophet Habakkuk in those days. And he is reminding us today. And here God wants us, you know, God wants us to praise Him 
for the present condition. That is what Prophet Habakkuk did. And Prophet Habakkuk, you know, verse 19, he says, no matter what happens in chapter 3, verse 19, the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on my high hills. Amen. Today, you know, God is reminding us just like how he promised Prophet Habakkuk in those days. God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And here Prophet Habakkuk talks about, you know, this whole book talks about the Exodus. He thanked God for how he brought people out of Egypt and prophet Habakkuk reminds that God is going to do the same thing when he comes again when he comes as the second you know exodus when he comes to take us back with him he is going to judge the people the righteous God is going to come back and he is going to judge the people according to his uh, judgment you know he is a righteous God he's a just God and Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says the just shall live by faith and today that is what god expects us to do we those who are righteous we ought to live by faith knowing that when god returns he is going to judge and he's be going to be just in his judgment and all we have to do no matter what happens though the fig tree may not blossom nor the fruit be on the vines though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls we are yet to pray we are yet to rejoice in the Lord we are to be glad and we are to thank God you know praise God today Prophet Habakkuk is reminding all of us to praise God in the midst of all the trouble and all the turmoil because he says there will be a time when God is going to answer all our prayers and there will be a time, you know, chapter 2 and verse 2 says like this, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says like this, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. You know, that is what God is reminding all of us today. Whatever the promises that God has given you, hold on to the promise, write it down. And here God reminds us for the appointed time where he's going to come back again. And let us be reminded of the same thing, the God that he's going to come back again to take us back to heaven with him. You know, be reminded that he is going to come back. You know, fear not and fret not. Let us not weep and wail. We, let us not be, you know, waddling around and be worn off and grow weary. But just like Habakkuk, let us watch and wait commit yourself to wait on the lord commit yourself to watch and pray commit yourself to pray without ceasing pray for the revival of the nations put your trust in god and no matter you know even if everything around you fails you can hold on to the god who who is true to his promises his promises never fails his promises are yea and amen and that is what god is you know reminding all of us today you know god is not a god who slacks in his promise you know 2 peter verses 3 9, uh, chapter 3 verse 9 says like this god is not slack in his promises he's not going to slack in even one promise that he has given you he is able to fulfill all the promises. All we have to do today is just like Prophet Habakkuk, you know, praise God and pray to God for the past victories. Thank God because he has been faithful. Praise God for the power that he displayed in your life in the many circumstances that you came, you know, when God intervened and when God delivered you. And praise God 
for the present condition of your life. No matter what is happening around your life, just begin to thank God because He is a God who dwells in the midst of the praises. Change your prayers into praises today. I encourage all of you to change your petitions into praises today. You know, change all your burdens into, you know, thanks today so that God can intervene in your life today. And Galatians 6, 2 says like this, Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, Jesus Christ came into this world. You know, uh, you know, the, the word, you know, someone said like this, in, the prayer is the place where the burdens change shoulders, you know, and that is what exactly happens, you know, when you pray. Whatever burden that you're carrying today, just put it on God. You know, cast all your cares upon the Lord and He will deliver you. Just like how Prophet Habakkuk experienced the deliverance from her. Just like how Prophet Habakkuk experienced and he saw the revival happening in the land of Judah. God is faithful to carry you through. All we have to do is be firm, stand on, watch and guard so that God will intervene in your lives and you will be set free from everything that you're going through. I just want everybody to, wherever you are, look unto God, you know, cast all your cares on him. Even as we pray, commit and tell God, I'm going to uh, praise you for all the past good works that you did for me. God, I'm going to praise you for the power that you displayed in my life until this day. Lord, I'm going to praise you for the present condition. You know, it may appear bad for the people around me. You know, it may appear bad for myself when I look into it. But God, I'm going to praise you and I thank you because you are there in the midst of everything. And though it tarries, Lord, I know that the appointed time will come and where you will intervene. And Lord, I know that, you know, you will do a great work in my life. Even as you begin to say that, you know, I know that you will experience God's presence, God's working in your life right at this moment, even as I'm speaking to you. I just want everybody come before the Lord. Tell God, Lord, I'm going to praise you because you are going to work for me. You are going to fight on my behalf. And all the Babylons that are in front of me, all the pharaohs that come in front of me, Lord, I know that you are going to cast them cast them away. Let's just look unto the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful time, Lord. I thank you for the word that came and, you know, directly and spoke to my heart. No matter what's happening around me, no matter how things are around me, Lord, I know that you are the God who was with me in the past. You are the God who carried me through, you know, with many miracles and with many, you know, powerful ways that you led me. Lord, I praise you because your presence and your power was so real in my life in the past. Lord, I praise you because you are with me in the present condition today. Lord, I praise you because among, in the midst of all the uncertainties, in the midst of all this uh, you know, turmoil, your mercy is there for me, Lord. Lord, I praise you because no matter what happens, you are the God of my salvation. You are the God who will strengthen me. And Lord, I thank you because at the end, we are going to be victorious and we are going to you know, rise up and we are going to see the nations revive. We are going to see the lives transformed. Lord, I thank you because even as I heard, even as I committed, Lord, you have brought the revival in my life. Lord, I thank you, you know, and praise you because you have begun your work in my life. Lord, I thank you, Father. Lord, I give each and every one who said this prayer with me, Lord, right wherever they are, I want you to minister to them in a very personal way. And let this day be a day of transformation. Let this day be a day of revival in their lives, Father. Lord, even as they move on from, you know, from this day, let them see you working in their lives. And Lord, I pray, even as we prepare and wait for your coming, Lord, Lord, I pray that their faith arise let their trust in you arise the assurance that you will take care of them 
Let the assurance in them, Lord, grow each day. Lord, I thank you and I praise you, God. I commit this whole time into your precious hands. And Lord, every listener be blessed. Lord, I pray that these words remain in our hearts. And Lord, let us be empowered in your presence, Father. I thank you and I praise you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. And let's all say this together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for all of you, those who joined with us today. And I pray that you will have a blessed week. And God of our salvation will be your strength for this week. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.